Welcome back to the lab, y'all. I'm really excited today. First off, it's been a while since I've made a video. Second off, I've got a really good video here. Um, and that's mainly due to just what I've seen some different things that have been going on on our home lab. I've seen some things on YouTube, people talking on Twitter, LinkedIn. And I figured, you know what? I have a really good video that's about LUNs. I'll put it up here somewhere for us to watch about. But, you know, a LUN actually requires a, how do I put this? A hardware, I should say, to run on. Um, and today's video is about that hardware. That hardware is what we call a storage area network, or SAN. So, let's jump in. All right. Man, it feels really good to be back. So let's jump in here, guys. Just like I was saying, SAN, storage area networks. What are those? Why are they important? What do they do? So. As you can see up here, I've got TrueNAS up. TrueNAS in my home lab is basically my SAN. Now, I will say it does have NAS in its name, which NAS is a network attached storage. And I'll explain a little bit of the difference here in between SAN and NAS. I really don't want to dive too much into NAS because I feel like it really deserves its own video. But I do want to bring up some of the big differences of a storage area network and a NAS um, and why they're different and what they do. Now, today I will say, and a lot of these, you know, feel free to leave comments. There are a lot of NASs that can be SANS, and there's a lot of SANS that can be NASs. It's just, you know, it's kind of how it's set up and what it's doing is what changes how you would call it, I'd say. So one of the big things that a storage area network or a SAN does is that it actually does what we call block level transfer of data. So what that means is that it's not transferring files, it's actually transferring block level data from the drives or the LUN in this case. A lot of times a LUN is a logical unit number. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll pop up another thing up here just letting you all know if you want to go take a link of what, uh, look at what a LUN is. But first I'd really understand what a storage area network is. So what a storage area network is, let's get back on topic here, is a piece of hardware that's got everything inside of it from the drives to what we call the switches all right, and all of the computer systems, RAMs to actually run a storage you know, node or cluster. And the way it works is you actually utilize the drives in a RAID set, and that RAID set could be a RAID 6, a RAID you know, 5, a RAID 10, whatever you decide to be. Um, and those drives are then put into a storage pool that can be accessed by any number of hosts or you know, such as that. And so the way that works a lot of times is through what they call iSCSI, all right? Um, there's also fiber channel setup so you can use in which that uses uh, WWNs, which is another way of network communication. And that's actually a fiber channels will communicate with each other when it comes to a SAN and a host. For me here in my stack, as you can see, what I've got up here is I actually have two 10 gig uh, network connections that are set up to my host utilizing iSCSI that allow my hosts um, to connect and communicate with my storage area network, with my SAN, or in this case, TrueNAS. And what that means is that I actually can have multiple hosts. In this case, I can have my two Dell R740s can actually connect to the same storage device and access the same storage device. Now, with virtualization, I can only run that operating system once with how my stuff's set up. What that means is that if I'm accessing this storage area network with my virtualization host, my ESXi host, they each can run their they're virtualized machines from the storage node, but only one of them can be ran at a time. So if I have a single uh, domain controller, it can only be ran from one of my hosts, but both hosts can access it. And why this is important is this goes over to business continuity, this goes into you know, site reliability engineering and things like that. What you can do with a storage area network is you could have actually a storage area network or two of the same identical pieces of hardware actually in a data center. And what this means is that they can actually be replicated to one another. So that way, if one of your you know, SANS were to die or have a controller failure or something were to happen, you had to take it down, you'd have a redundancy. And what that means is that you could to ultimately take down one of those SANS, repair it, do what you need to, bring it back online, they replicate back to each other, and the whole time, any number of hosts that you have connected to those SANS would actually be able to utilize the other you know, replication partner and keep on running with everything as if nothing happened. And that's where site reliability, um, you know, engineering comes in, that's where business continuity um, really comes in and making sure that when we set up these infrastructures that they, you know, it, it's kind of like designing an airplane in a way. And I, I, you know, in no way it means is it like designing an airplane because you don't really have lives in your hands like you do an airplane. But in reality, you have to make sure there's many safety 
and basically, um, I'd say backups to the backups to make sure things can happen. And that's where storage area networks are really powerful because not only can you create replications in kind of a group there on site, it is very possible to go ahead and actually have replication partners that are across the country, across the world, spread out everywhere. And what that means is that much like Azure, Amazon Web Services and such, they can actually replicate the data across these giant data centers utilizing the internet. And what that means is say, there's something that happens in you know, Azure or Amazon's, you know, one of their data center regions, they can go ahead and actually just migrate you, move you over to a whole nother region, and you'd actually have no idea that you were in that region at all completely. So it's, it's really exciting to sit here and talk about storage area networks because they're a big part of how we get things done when it comes to data centers, infrastructure, and making these large scale applications. Now to kind of dive into it deeper, just because a storage area network you know, is set up, it actually a lot of times will be plugged into a switch and a lot of times you'll actually have a whole separate network and that's why it's called storage area network is you'll actually have a whole separate set of IP addresses, network schema, all of that and normally I would say it's air gap or it's usually only accessible through the hosts that are utilizing it and not accessible through any other means other than the SAN or the hosts themselves because it is data, it's not real internet traffic, it's data traffic and you don't want any of that to be you know, man in the middle attack or any of the good things or anybody, you know, getting into that and causing corruption of that. So a lot of times those are on their own network, plug in the host. What this also means though, is that a lot of these SANs can be accessed by more than one, two, three, four hosts. You could have dozens, hundreds of hosts all accessing, accessing the same storage infrastructure, allowing it to put, boot these virtual machines, run them, access them. You know, a lot of times nowadays, too, we run Kubernetes, we run Docker instances. These can all actually be ran on SANS. A lot of times, the way it works is you're going to end up actually building out your whole entire storage and your LUN and everything, and it actually is going to be on a storage area network. You need a place to store you know, the container and where it's running and how it's running. So a lot of times, storage area networks are the backbone of how everything is ran in a large data center. So I'm really excited to give you all a quick overview of what a SAN is. I really hope this was a helpful video. Drop a comment down below if you believe this video is helpful to you. Um, you know, I'm gonna say again, I'm really excited to get on some videos. I've got some more videos planned. I've also got a state of the stack update for 2023 to be going over some things. Got, as you can see here, a new FreeNAS server. My last one actually died, so my FreeNAS should should say, so TrueNAS is in. It's been updated, it's been running great now for about three or four months, so I'm really excited to get a video in there and doing that. So thank you again, guys, for joining. Thank you, everybody.